ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحديث حديث محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam Today we will speak about a subject of which is great importance to all of us each and every single muslim mukmin believer in Allah jalla wa ala must adorn himself with this particular characteristic for this particular branch from the branches of Al Islam and our faith. And that is At Tawakkal. At Tawakkal is loosely <coughs> translated as placing your trust and your reliance in Allah Jalla wa ala alone. Allah Jalla wa ala he says in the Quran, Wa ala Allahi fatawakkalu in kuntum mu'mineen. So upon Allah place your trust or your reliance if you are true believers. So Allah Jalla wa ala in this ayah has connected this matter of tawakkal to iman. If you abandon tawakkal, you disregard it and you leave it, then you have either a flaw, a, 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 an iman which is defect or you have no iman whatsoever. Because in this ayah that I read out, he said, if you are believers, then make tawakkal in Allah. In another ayah in the Quran, Allah Jalla wa Ali said, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ and That whoever truly places his trust and reliance upon Allah, then Allah will be sufficient for him. He will be sufficient for him. And this ayah needs very little explanation. If we truly place our trust in Allah, Hakka tawakkili, proper trust in Allah Jalla wa Ala. Then and only then, Allah Jalla wa, Jalla wa, Jalla wa Ala, He will be sufficient for our needs. Rabbana alayka tawakkalna wa ilayka anabna wa ilayka al -masir. A dua which is found in the Quran, where we are encouraged to say, O oh our Lord, upon you we make our reliance and our trust, and to you we turn in repentance. And to you is our <coughs> final return. So there's three things that Allah Jalla, two things which Allah Jalla wa Ala, He connected with tawakkal. Anabna, returning to Allah, seeking forgiveness from Allah, repenting to Allah, making tawbah to Allah. This is part of tawakkal, and you will see this later. Wa ilayk al masir. And to you, we will return. So He connected. The fearing of Allah Jalla wa'ala, worship of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Why? Because we will be returning to Allah Jalla wa'ala connected to tawakkal. فَتَوَكَّلُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّكَ عَلَى الْحَقِّ الْمُوِينَ Allah Jalla wa'ala says in the Quran, And make tawakkal in Allah, for indeed you are upon the truth, the manifest truth. So we make tawakkal in Allah Jalla wa'ala because we understand the path we have chosen is correct. The Sirat al Mustaqim of Al Islam and Sunnah, Salafiyyah, Hadith, the way of the early scholars, the way of the early Sahaba. This is the true way. So we make tawakkal in Allah when we believe and we understand that this is the path to follow. We make tawakkal in Him 
as he should be made to walk in. This path is al-haq. فَإِذَا عَزَنْتَ فَتَوَقَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَقِّلِينَ And if you make a decision, Allah says in the Qur'an, then place your trust in Allah. For verily Allah loves those that places their trust and reliance in Him. So in this ayah in the Qur'an, we can clearly see when we make decisions and our lives are full of decisions, be they decisions of college, school, university, be they decisions of business transactions, decisions for family and children and parents, decisions. Our life is full of decisions. If we make our istikhara, our seeking guidance from Allah, and then we make a decision about a matter, then we must truly place our, rep our reliance and trust in Allah and leave it there. Because whatever comes from there is from Allah. Be it good, be it bad, success or failure, loss or profit. Or, or, or profit, whatever comes from there, health or bad health. You made your tawakkul in Allah, you made a decision, put your trust in Allah, and then that is what Allah Jalla wa Ala, He loves. He absolutely loves people, His slaves, who do this. Because they are, what are they doing? Because they are then truly submitting to Allah, realizing that they have no might and they have no power themselves to control these matters. So they make this decision, they place their trust in Allah, and they go forth. And if the decree comes back, not as they wanted it to be, they're patient, and they accept this decree. You will see this as part of the pillar, from the pillars of Tawakkal. And Allah Jalla Ali says in the Quran, فَعَرِدْ عَنْهُمْ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا And turn away from them, and place your trust in Allah. For verily Allah is sufficient for the disposer of your affairs. This is when people are turning you away from your religion of Islam, the following of the Prophet Muhammad away from the Sunnah, turning you away from the decisions which you want to do of the dunya which are halal. And they want to drive your attention towards a haram. They want to drive your attention towards placing your trust in those things and people of the creation which have no power, no might. No ability to aid you and help you. So here he's saying, so turn away from that. And place your trust in Allah. Place your trust of your religion in Allah. Place your trust of your family in Allah. Place your trust of your wealth in Allah. وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا Because Allah is sufficient as a disposer of your affairs. The best to rely upon, the best to trust in. We, my brothers, we live our lives. And through the course of our lives, we face different things. Sometimes we face fear. Sometimes we face anxiety. Sometimes we're facing um, any illnesses. Sometimes we're facing loss of wealth, loss of health, loss of in a produce. Our lives are made as a test. Sometimes we fear people and we're looking for protection. All these things are covered in this subject of Tawakkal. Allah is the best of protectors and He is the most merciful and the most kind. Wallahu khayru hafidan wa huwa arhamu rahimin. That Allah is the best protector and He is the most merciful of those who show mercy. If we can understand this ayah and memorize this verse, Everything comes in perspective. All our anxieties, fears will go out of the window. If we believe in what we say when we say that Allah is the best protector, Allah will khayru hafidan, who is the best of protectors. That means he's better than the police, the armies, the missiles, the airplanes. He's better than the man next door. He's better than my family. He's better than myself. Allah can protect me more better than the authorities. Allah can protect me more better than anyone and anything in this world. And this is the meaning of the ayah. That verily Allah is the best of protectors. And He is the most merciful of those who show mercy. This is connected to His protection. Allah Jalla wa Ala, out of His mercy, He will protect you from the thing you fear from the anxiety you feel, from the harm that you fear may come to you, from the creation who Allah created, 
who Allah knows fully everything about, they, the ones who want to harm, they are limited in their knowledge of what they have of you and themselves and the situation. But Allah's knowledge is all-knowing, all-powerful. He knows everything. He is the best protector and He is the most merciful of those who show mercy when you're in a situation where you have no hope except in Allah. There's nothing left for you. There's no way, no exit strategy. There's only Allah. And then you turn to Him and you say, that, Oh Allah, you are the most merciful of those that show mercy. Show me this mercy. Find me an exit, a strategy out of this situation. And Allah Jalla wa Ala will answer your prayers. <coughs> a true believer does not fear the people. He does not feel anxiety to the degree that it makes him turn his backs on his religion, to the degree that it makes him excessively worry, take his own life, take others' lives. A believer doesn't fit this description. After the Battle of Uhud, when the believers were struck with a very painful you know, uh, uh, loss in the Battle of Uhud, they sought refuge in the mountains, in the mountain of Uhud. And when they climbed the mountain, and they were coming down, just coming down the other side, they saw a passerby. Indeed, it was Shaitan, dressed as a, as a passerby. And he said, Verily, the people are gathering against you on the other side of the mountain, so you fear them. They said what? They said, وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَقِيلُ Allah is the, is enough for us. He is the best to rely on. So they responded to this satanic whisper. They responded to this attempt to make them fear with a positive note that we trust in Allah. And Allah is the best to trust in. Meaning Allah is our protector. Allah is the most merciful, most kind. فَزَادَهُمْ إِمَانًا so this increased them in their iman. And when they were faced with this situation of fear, and they were told to fear, it only increased them in their iman. This is the level to which we, as believers, must strive to reach. <coughs> in an authentic hadith, <coughs> the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned about 70,000 people that will enter into paradise without any questioning whatsoever. And there were those, he said, who do not ask for cauterization and they do not ask for Rukya to be, have, uh, have ruk, Rukya Quran being read on them. There's a lot of tafsir in the details about this, a lot. And this is not the time to take the ahkam, the ruling out of this hadith. However, in the hadith, you can see the great reward for placing your trust in Allah and not taking the ruqya and not taking the cauterization. Islam encourages to make a reliance and tawakkal in Allah Jalla wa ala. Also, Ibn Abbas, he, may Allah be pleased with him, he said these words, Hasbul Allah wa ni'mal wakil, enough is Allah, the best to rely upon, were the exact words which Ibrahim alayhi salam said when he was being flung through, thrown, catapulted in the air into the fire. When they were tying him up and they made the fire, he only believed there's only certain death there, but he did not fear. He said, enough is Allah for me, the best to rely upon, as he was being flung in the air. And as he was going in the air, Allah ordered the fire that when Ibrahim lands inside there, be cool upon Ibrahim. So he landed and the fire was cool upon him. Nothing burnt him, nothing harmed him. And then he walked away. The people looked at him and thought, my God, what is this? A magician, an evil soothsayer. But that was a test for them. When they heard him say, enough is Allah, for me the best to rely upon, and Allah saved him, they still disbelieved. That's in terms of his own, but in terms of him, you see the tawakkal in here, very similar to the tawakkal which the Sahaba displayed. And they took it from what they learned from Ibrahim alayhi when in the Mount Uhud, the example of Mount Uhud. Umar al-Khattab, he said, if you truly rely, he knows from the Prophet if you truly rely upon Allah, 
then Allah will provide for you, for you just like He provides for the birds. They leave with an empty stomach, their nests, looking for food, <coughs> and they come home with a full stomach. Imagine a bird coming out of his nest with his limited knowledge, that the brain is so small, he just goes looking for food. And then he sees some breadcrumb, or he sees this, a worm, and he sees that. And then Allah, Allah puts it there for him. Then the bird goes down, eats it, and goes back full, takes some for his family as well. Did that bird make the worm come out of the ground? Did the bird go to the home and tell the homekeepers to throw the bread outside? Done nothing except search and look for the risk. Allah placed it there. And then he was provided. This is how Allah Jalla wa Ala provides for us all. We make the effort. We, do, we tie the camel. We make the effort. We do not become lazy. And then we put our trust in Allah and look for the halal means. And the halal means will come. <coughs> risk, sustenance is another thing which people fear. And when they fear, it causes them to do irrational, haram, incorrect things. Which then makes them accountable to in the sight of Allah. If Allah wills, He will punish them. If He wills, He will forgive them. But it's a very serious matter. I have seen with my own eyes brothers who are so concerned about making money, making money, risk, that they say things that are incorrect and haram. They do things that are incorrect and haram. Claiming if I don't say this and if I don't do this, then the risk is not going to come to me. This is not the true tawakkal and reliance upon Allah. Your risk is written for you on your forehead before you come into this earth. How much money you're going to make, whether you're going to be a boy or a girl, happy or sad, or time of your death, all of this is written. It's about having tawakkal and reliance in Allah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen as salatu was salamu ala Rasulul Karim Amma Ba'ad. Another very negative feature that comes out of Muslims that don't have tawakkal, reliance on Allah, is something very serious. And we suffer from this. And we cause others to suffer because of this. The asal is, we have no trust in Allah, or little trust in Allah. And then we become envy over somebody who's got more wealth making more business. And then we begin to say things about his business to harm it, so it goes down. Why? Because I don't have and he has. I have less, he has more. These things are impermissible. You will go to work in the morning and you will get what is written for you before you come home. Period. And there is nothing anybody can do to take your risk from you. Allah has written it. It's going to come to you if your neighbor is you know selling the same goods as you or he's cheating and you're not cheating he's making twice as much money you're making half the amount of money but what is written for you will come to you if you copy him and your neighbor and you cheat and you lie and you deceive and you get that money more than what you got when you weren't cheating and you weren't lying this money was going to come to you anyway it was never going to be prohibited to you anyway. It may have come later, you may have bought it a bit quicker, but later on you'll suffer. Because the amount of money or wealth you're going to earn is limited. It's fixed. The choice is yours. You take the wealth, the money, the risk that others provided for you, from a haram way, in the haram method, to please yourself. Or you be patient with what you have, and do it the halal way. But whatever you do, whatever wealth you got, you got in the past was written for you. And the future is written for you. So this, have no envy, no jealousy. Have no care for what other people have. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, may Allah give them more, but may it be halal. This is, should be the attitude of the believer. And there are six pillars, my brothers, of tawakkal. Six pillars of making true reliance on Allah Jalla wa Ala. I'll go over them very quickly because time is very short now. The first of the six pillars is to know 
is to know Allah by his names and his qualities and his attributes. This, you have to know that Allah is capable and he is sufficient to rely on. That the whole world and everything in it is in his hand. He is the one who controls the whole world. He protects even the tadpoles. Where do you find tadpoles? In rivers, under the rocks, hiding away. No one harms them. Allah protects the tadpole in the river. He protects the dolphins and sharks in the sea and the fishes in the sea. He protects you and me. He protects the babies and children and everything, animals in the wild. How do the animals survive when there's lions around them and tigers around them? Allah protects who he wants to protect. This is all you have to understand and believe. Allah is the greatest, the most powerful. He is the most kind, the greatest of the, the protectors, the provider, the raziq. He is Allah. When you understand this, you have fulfilled one pillar from the six pillars of tawakkal. Because now you know who you're going to make tawakkal upon. It's no good to say, yes, I make tawakkal upon Allah. But your faith is shaky. You don't believe. You know, truly, that Allah has the capability of actually in the, uh, aiding you and helping you. And that is manifest. Even though we say with our tongues, Allah is the helper, He's capable, He's strong, He will help me. But do you really believe that? We go then and we lie, and we cheat, and we steal, and we trick, and we make this way, that way. That, that's evidence that you don't truly rely on Allah. You don't truly understand Allah's capabilities, that He has the ability to give you from a halal source. So that's the first pillar. The second pillar is to believe that every matter has a cause and it has a means. So we don't make blind to tawakkal in Allah and we say, I'm going to sit at home, put my feet up and my risk is written for me so it's going to come to me. Yes, it will come to you, no doubt. But we do not sit back and wait for the risk. This is something which is established in the Sharia. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Be keen to do that which will benefit you. Rely on Allah and do not be lazy. And do not say, when a problem befalls you, if I would have done this, I would have got that. If I would have done this, I could have got that. Rather say, this was the decree of Allah and Allah does as He wills. So my brothers, we do not be lazy. We follow the hadith in Sahih Muslim that I read. That we go, we search, everything has a cause and an effect. If you don't get up and get changed, you'll be naked in the streets. If you don't drink water, you'll be thirsty. If you don't eat three times a meal, you're going to be weak. And weak. You won't have strength. You know this. Likewise, if you don't make effort looking for your risk, you won't get the risk. If you don't make effort asking Allah to protect you, and then looking for the means of protection in the world, then you won't get that. You have to make the effort. The third pillar, and I'm rushing through this in Shekhar, all of these pillars have a lot more details in them. The third pillar of this tawakkal, play making two true reliance on Allah Jalla wa is to remain firm in relying upon Allah alone. This is crucial, this third pillar. Why? Because many people start out, right, we make tawakkal Allah, let's go. Halfway through, or a third of the way through, they've forgotten <laughs> about their tawakkal and they start going to the creation. Say, brother, brother, you know, I haven't heard about this, uh, this, this money I've invested somewhere. It hasn't come. Can you please do this and do that and do this? And you ask him to do things which are haram in order to attain information <coughs> or to help your business. Where's the talk? <coughs> Halfway through, is gone. Or you go to a suit sale, black magic. Find out what happened to so and so. He's supposed to come over here and give me X, Y, and Z. Haram. You lost your trust in Allah. You started saying to in Allah, but now you're going to <coughs> suit sales. You're going to beers and fakirs. You're going to black magic to get attain what you want. A woman wants to marry a man. She said the family. The family on that side said, "Well, you know, okay, we'll think about it." The father, the, 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 the son says, "Oh, maybe I'll marry, maybe not." So she can't wait. She's waiting, 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 waiting. Where's her token? It goes to where? She goes to these people. Black magic. Make this magic. Make him love me. Make him want to marry me. They do the black magic. And then next week, no, they're married upon haram. Or his, his changes or whatever. My point is, where is the tawakkal in Allah? Where? It's important that we understand this third pillar. 
once you've made your tawakkul in Allah, remain steadfast, even if things get difficult and hard for you, even if the road becomes un, you know, uneven, and you're facing hardship to the point where you, you feel you're going to lose something, because Allah Jalla wa may test you to that point to see how you're going to react. Make sure you pass that test and see it through. And then at the end, see what comes. The fourth pillar is to depend on Allah Jalla wa ala alone completely with one's heart and when doing so in action. You have to depend on Allah Jalla wa ala to the extent that one does not feel anxious, they don't fear, they don't have no confusion regarding the status of the situation and the objective that they want to achieve. They have no anxiety, no fear, they are at ease, tranquility from the beginning to the end. Whatever comes, comes. If I lose, I lose. I win, I win. If I get married, I get married. If I don't get married, I don't get married. If I attain, I attain. If I don't attain, I don't attain. If I pass my exam, I pass. If I don't, I don't. You know, this is the way we have to be. Because when you have this attitude in this fourth pillar, you are at ease, sakina, tranquility. Unlike the one, unlike the one who says, I put my trust in Allah. But when things are underway are going shaky and he, he's fearing, he's full of anxiety, he's not going to attain the objectives he wants from this. He starts shouting at his wife, smacking his kids, coming home angry like a monster. And they're wondering, what's happened? What's happened to this man? He's not telling them what's really happening. He's full of anxiety, full of stress, wondering, you know, what's going to happen X, Y, and Z. This is not the way the believer makes tawakkal in Allah. This is not tawakkal. You've lost the pillar. You know what a pillar is? A pillar is what holds that matter up. When it's gone, the matter's, when the pillar's gone, the whole thing crumbles. So being at ease with yourself and, your, and the people around you and the situation and the environment. The fifth pillar is to realize the essence of reliance upon Allah Jalla wa Allah is to entrust all matters to Him willingly, willingly, not with any force. Huh? Oh, I'm being forced to make tawakkal in Allah. No, you do it willingly. You want to make tawakkal in Allah. You know it's best to make tawakkal in Allah. So you make tawakkal in Allah. You're not forced because of the situation or because other partners are saying to do it. Or because, you know, uh, I have to make tawakkal. I've got a choice now. No one else can help me, so I turn to Allah. Start for Allah. What kind of tawakkal is that? Okay, I tried this, I tried that, I tried this. Ah, to make tawakkal in Allah. <coughs> Allah, you've done everything. Of the, you've gone to the creation and done everything you, you want to, you most possibly can. When it all fails, 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 then you feel forced to now put your trust in Allah. This is, this is not tawakkal, ikhwan. This is not tawakkal of a true believer. As Allah says in the Quran, وَأَفَوْوِدُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ That I leave my affairs to Allah. You submit, you surrender. For verily, Allah Jalla wa Ala is the is, is seer of everything that his slaves, they do. And the last pillar, we finish this quickly. Sixth pillar is to be content with the outcome of that tawakkal in Allah. Be content, not become frustrated, not become angry, depressed, you know, don't feel you that's the end of the world. No matter how much money you lose, or you no matter how much hardship you face at home, no matter how much any difficulty you have to endure because you place your trust in Allah. No matter what you do, you took your precautions, you did the best you could, you put your trust in Allah, the desired outcome did not come as you wanted to come. We do not start saying evil words, words of kufr. Oh, I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't have done that, I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't have done that. This is now doubting every everything that you did in the first place to make talk of Allah, you're negating it all. We don't do this. We accept the qadr of Allah, we contend with the decree of Allah, and we believe firmly. We believe firmly. And I say again, we believe firmly. But if the decree of the outcome is not what we desire it to be, it is good for us. Better for us than if we had that outcome which we wanted. Allah knows, but you do not know. Perhaps you dislike something, but it is better for you. Allah knows, and you people, you don't know.
أقول لي قولي هذا أستغفر لي ويكون مسلم المسلمين وأقيم السلام